W resources uh, listed on AIM, market capitalization uh, around about 30 million pounds. Uh, our assets are primarily in uh, the Iberian Peninsula in Spain and Portugal. Our flagship La Perla is um, just north of Seville. That's fully funded and under development. In northern Portugal, we have the Regua Tungsten project, which is fully approved for development. And in central Portugal, we have the uh, Sao Martino gold deposit and the uh, Tanoka copper mines. I won't spend a lot of time on uh, Portugal, uh, but there's great potential there. Um, La Perilla is where the near-term action is. Just standing back a little bit, um, what we're rapidly becoming is a world-class tungsten company. We have very, very low operating costs and also very low capital cost projects which are going into production over the next uh, 12 to 18 months. We have a rapid program of growth, um, starting with La Perilla, starting the first quarter of 2019 with 2,700 tonnes of production capacity uh, being built by that point in time. We have a straightforward expansion of that to um, uh, over 4,000 tonnes and then a further expansion with Regua. So there's a lot of growth built into this company. We're also, importantly, fully funded. BlackRock uh, provided us with a 35 million term loan that fully funds the $28 million development of La Perilla. The extra Madura government um, provided us with a grant uh, of 7 uh, million US dollars, 5.3 million euros, as an incentive to develop the project. And we recently, with Turner Pope, uh, completed a small capital raising that allowed ourselves to get into a position where our Portuguese assets, which are in gold, copper, and importantly, tungsten, are moving very, very quickly um, up the uh, development curve. We also have all the offtake we need in place, and I'll talk a little bit later in the presentation, but the tungsten market is extraordinarily tight extraordinarily tight in uh, Europe and also the United States. And that's going to you know, add a lot of dollars to the bottom line as we go forward. Let me summarize what we do in Spain and what we do in Portugal. Our main asset in Spain is La Perilla. Uh, it will be the uh, largest uh, producing uh, tungsten mine in Europe. It's currently around about 50 million tonnes, a small amount of additional development expenditure as part of developing this mine will take it up to well over 75 million tonnes, currently has a mine life of 11 years, uh, I think we'll comfortably end up at around about 20, and we're very low cost. Current tungsten price is around about $340 per MTU, MTU is a 10 kilograms, we're currently sitting at a very low cost structure of $94 per MTU. With the BlackRock funding and with all the, the good work our team has done, we're on track and very much on track for development in the first quarter of 2019. We have a very simple, proven process uh, with low cost mining and low cost processing. And I'll just show you a little bit about what that looks like. And as I mentioned in the introduction, we're secured with supply to the major European and the major American customers. Portugal, uh, we have a much bigger portfolio, but slightly earlier stage. Uh, we've got tungsten, copper, and gold. Our biggest project and our most advanced is Regua, which is a tungsten project in northern Portugal. It's fully approved. We actually bought the uh, land that sits uh, above or below the, um, uh, the tungsten deposit uh, earlier in this year. It's got a very low capital cost to put it into production, and we're going to add uh, 1,300 tonnes per annum of additional capacity with Regua. In addition to Regua, which is development ready, we've got three, yeah, some very nice upside exploration assets. We just drilled Taroka, 
2,000 uh, metres of drilling. Um, that's a very high grade tungsten deposit, uh, 20 kilometres from Regua. Anything we find there gets monetized very quickly because we can feed it through the Regua plant. Sal Martino, currently around about 110,000 ounces of gold um, resource. Uh, we've done a diamond core drilling program. As we speak, uh, we're drilling 2,000 metres in Sao Martino, and we think we're going to be able to quite substantially increase the size of that gold um, deposit. We're looking to get over the threshold half a million ounce mark, um, and from there, um, we've got a lot of potential to significantly monetize that asset. And in copper, uh, we've got a license that has two former copper mines, um, we've run some uh, seismic work and some other work and we're looking at some very large copper anom anomalies in central Portugal. That's it for Portugal, but um, there'll be a lot of news flow on this asset in addition to La Perilla over the next six months. Tungsten. Um, tungsten's the world's hardest metal. It's uh, the highest boiling point. It's used in all ranges of uh, commercial and um, defense and industrial uses. Probably the simplest way to, to let you know what's happening is we're in a position today where demand is very high. You've had growth in China, Asia, Europe, and the United States, which is growing at very, very rapid levels. And we've got a situation where there is very acute supply and demand balances. You started to see that in the tungsten price. Um, uh, beginning of, uh, end of 16, we were sitting around about $180 per MTU. We're now, um, as of Friday, we're over $340 per MTU. That's $34,000 a tonne. And what I'm hearing back from our customers in the United States and our customers in, in uh, Europe is they're really struggling uh, with supply at the moment. So don't be surprised if that um, price heads higher. It's a very, very good time to bring in large-scale uh, tungsten production, particularly outside of China. Um, if you've got supply in a you know, stable EU, OECD country like Spain, and you can bring it into the European and American markets, you've got an extraordinarily strong, strong customer base. We also produce tin, and tin's running uh, very strongly as well. So two very good commodities for the next uh, period of time. La Perilla. Um, why is it a great asset to bring on at this point in time? One, it's got fantastic geology and metallurgy. Um, the tungsten and the tin is in these quartz veins that on either side of the quartz veins have grey wake shale. We're able to recover the tungsten from this ore body very, very efficiently, which gives us low costs right at the bottom of the cost curve. And it um, allows us to put this project into production at much, much lower cost than uh, some of the other players in the industry. Put that into pictures. Um, we're sitting right down here at the bottom of the operating cost curve. We're much, much lower cost than um, uh, the other three quarters of the industry. Uh, we're underpinned by a capital cost for putting this uh, project in production of around about uh, 25 million euros. And that compares, uh, for those of you who've been in the UK, to 250 million for the um, similar size project that Wolf has in um, Plymouth. Um, very, very significantly lower than uh, most um, uh, global tungsten projects to put into production. There's a number of reasons why we have such low capital costs and also operating costs. The first reason is we've just got a fantastic location. Uh, we're strategically located literally five minutes drive from the main um, four-lane, six-lane highway from Madrid to Lisbon. Uh, you come off that highway, you're at the mine site in five minutes. Franco built a water channel. Um, 
two kilometers from the mine site, which we use as part of the overall development of the project. And we all already have some of the core elements of operation of a large scale mine already in place, already built, already established capital. That includes an operational tailings dam, power grid connections, and significant infrastructure. So when people say, how can you move into production for 25 million euros, um, when your competitors are looking at 10 times that, we start with a great location with established infrastructure. This up here is where we'll um, start mining. Uh, we already have the mine open. We've had our first blast. The benches are open and the higher grade areas are open for mining. We'll be able to put the tons on the wrong pad with no pre-strip. We already have the tailings dam fully permitted and operational. We can move immediately into uh, uh, use of that tailings dam. We have a very low operating cost structure. And, and in any mining project or oil and gas project, you need a cost structure that's extraordinarily competitive to make sure you can make your way through the cycles. We're going into, as I mentioned, what I think will be a very, very strong cycle over the next two to three years. Uh, but I'm not a, uh, a crystal ball forecaster, and I need to make sure that I can make money in this business, um, even at very low prices. And we have an ore body and a processing circuit that allows us to do that. We start with a open pit ore body with a very low strip ratio, effectively uh, one ton of waste to one ton of ore that allows us to get the ore into the processing plant at very low cost. Uh, we have a crusher um, that's um, under construction at site at the moment that very uh, efficiently crushes the ore. We then run into a jig and pre-concentration plant, and this is where we really start to get the significant operating cost savings. That jig is able to reject very large amounts of the waste mass with 97% recovery. So that means by the time we get into our concentrator, uh, we have very, very high efficiencies uh, and very low operating costs. So this processing circuit operated on the mine uh, when it was in operation from the late 1960s to the, the late uh, 1980s. It's proven, it works. We in our own right have built and operated all this equipment at pilot scale, if you want to call it that. And what we're doing at the moment is building the 25 million euro facility that allows us to produce at global scale. Uh, one, uh, I, I probably should have mentioned at the beginning, but there's a great piece of um, TPI research that literally came out onto your screens today by Phil uh, Spinpen, of, um, who's ex-Anglo. Um, very intensive um, piece of research, and if, if you've got the time and you want to dive into the details of uh, La Perilla and W Resources, I, I, I'd look at that. But um, one of the things Phil highlighted is we were able to move from the financing almost immediately into um, development of this project. We'd already, by the time BlackRock wrote the first check um, in the $35 million facility, were able to um, contract the crusher, contract the jig, and contract the uh, uh, concentration plant. So we've got off to a running start to develop the project. Uh, we're very much on schedule um, to hit the um, um, start date of the first quarter of 2019. I was down in um, uh, Seville and at site um, on Friday and over the weekend. Um, the team is moving very quickly on all aspects of project execution. Uh, you know, we're looking for the things we haven't thought about. It's going to be a very critical uh, time for us, but we're in... Uh, look, a, a really, really good position to execute really well, and we've got some excellent um, executives on the team running this construction program. A few quick pictures. Um, uh, we're in the civil work stage, pouring the concrete, uh, fabricating the steel. Um, lots of work down there for those of you, and I, I, I know I've seen a, a few of you uh, already on site. Uh, uh, we're going to have a site visit in September. We'll make sure you've all got uh, 
uh, you know, time to book your Spanish um, long weekend, but um, I think you'll see this site and the project completely transformed by the time those of you who are interested in uh, visiting come. So you can see uh, water diversion channels, concrete, um, uh, construction laydown areas. I mentioned the team. Ignore me. We have got an extraordinarily good um, construction, engineering, and execution team. Uh, one with a track record. A number of these guys have worked with me at Fortescue Met Metals Group, uh, which has a, a reputation in itself for exceptional project execution. Um, we've got every key element of this project running extremely smoothly, literally, what, two and a half months from when we closed the financing. Some of you have seen this uh, chart before. It's the financials of the project. Um, this, these financials are done at a significantly lower forecast price than um, what's prevailing at the moment. Uh, but even at this um, projected price scenario, we've got significant earnings capacity. Uh, we're looking at around about 20 million US dollars a year in EBITDA in the first phase of development, which we call the T2, 2 million tons of ROM. And that's going to expand to around about 40 million US dollars um, as we expand to 3.5 million tons per annum. So what's going to happen at W Resources over the next 12 to 18 months is we're going to go from a unfunded development company to a fully funded development company, which we are today, to a company that has very, very significant earnings on the bottom line and uh, significant earnings that are you know, well in excess of the um, amount of debt that we've had to take on board to finance this project in a very non-dilutive way. Here's some of the other key financials. Um, you know, there were very good reasons why BlackRock felt very confident about backing the management team, backing the project. And they certainly did an enormous amount of verification due diligence to um, support us. Um, so we're very much looking to deliver this earnings to um, the shareholders. Um, one quick point on Regua. Uh, Regua is sitting up there in northern Portugal. It's got a grade of three times La Perilla. It's development ready. It's got a low incremental capital cost. It's got low cost mining um, through Abbott's. And we think we can add this project um, to our production stream very decisively in 2019, particularly if we see the kind of um, strength of um, the tungsten and tin uh, price markets that we're looking at. So um, hopefully there's some investors in this room. Um, the question that uh, I get asked is, you know, why? Why invest in W now? What's, 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 what's important? What's, what's been achieved? But what's, what's coming? I guess the, um, we've always had um, large, low-cost mines. I think the, uh, the BlackRock funding exercise provided additional val validation for that. It also provided the funding. So we've been able to fund this project with debt, with almost non-existent um, use of equity. And that's because we've got such a low capital cost. So we're a funded company. There's not many AIM listed companies that are fully funded for the first phase of the de development. We're under development. Come and join us in September. We'll show you a project that's uh, rapidly moving towards um, production in the first quarter of 2019. We have a team, um, and I guess you tend to see me rather than the team, but we have an exceptional team on the ground and also in the financial positions that are making this company happen. And we've got the, I guess, the luxury of being able to strengthen the team as we go forward. We're looking at significant earnings um, from 2019 and growing substantially into 2021, 20, 22. 
And you know, that just changes the arithmetic in looking at where you invest. All of that adds up to what I think is probably the, the primary uh, reason to invest over the next, um, well, tomorrow or next month or over the next uh, three months or six months, is that a sig substantial re-rating of this company is going to come. Um, I'm very confident we will execute exceptionally well in terms of building the project and commissioning it to design capacity. That brings with it significant earnings from 2019, and it's the kind of earnings that justify a mid-cap, mid-tier market capitalization. The market hasn't, I don't think, fully captured that. I think the research report from TPI and uh, Phil that was released today gives you some of the, the fundamentals for why we can get there and how we can get there and what our track record is. Uh, but look at us, follow us. Um, I can't predict exactly when that substantial re-rating is going to occur, but we have all the fundamentals in place to be able to achieve it. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Do we have any uh, questions at all? Oh, you. Um, as a non Turner Pope client, um, I just would like to say sorry, my name's Charles Scott. I'm a private investor with a small stake in the company, just over 3%. Um, I'd just like to say which has been diluted, I might say, down to that, because of all these damn placings. Um, how, how, how impressed I am with this document that you've been presented here tonight. And, um, the, there was an earlier report by the same gentleman, um, Bill Swinton, but he's gone into much more detail, and he's um, put a lot more meat, and he's even actually said the, there's a price uh, target of... Uh, just under a penny, which is very heartening for me, if no one else. Um, there are one or two things I, I would like to say, though. Um, I'll ask Michael while he's here in Australia or wherever he lives and works. The strip ratio, he said, is, is very competitive. Could you just give me an idea of the difference between that and Wolf Minerals? Because I think it's Probably is one of the things that's held this company back. The Wolf Minerals have had a rough time. Can you just compare the strip ratio um, in the mine you are dealing with in La Perilla and, and, and in uh, Herbertland? Uh, so, so at, um, thank you, Charles, for the question. So at, at uh, La Perilla, we have, as you probably saw in some of the pictures, we have a, um, a very open area. We have our ore at surface. And uh, we have a strip ratio of one tonne of waste for every tonne of ore. That's a very important uh, ratio in mining because it de determines your mining cost when you start the project. Uh, Barra Capado, which is owned by um, Oak Tree and Ormondi, they've got a, rate, a strip ratio of about eight to one. So they've got to move eight tonnes of waste to, to get to one tonne of ore. Um, I'm not sure of the exact wolf number, but I think uh, the strip ratio there is running at about three or four to one. So we start with very, very low mining costs, and we go into a simple low-cost processing circuit. Any other questions? Lady in the red head. <laughs> yeah, red head, Helen. A <laughs> um, couple of questions. I don't know much about your company. I'm glad I've actually met, met you, and it's been a good presentation, by the way. I've really enjoyed it. Um, the two questions I would like to ask is, who are your competition within this business? And your offtake agreements, um, how many have you got with the amount that you're hoping to dig out of the ground? Where are you with that? Uh, so so, so we, if anyone didn't hear it at the back, it was just saying, offtake agreements, what do you have and your competition in this space? Okay. Well, I'll, I'll take the second question uh, first. Uh, so in terms of offtake, we have 80% of the uh, project contracted with um, major um, processes of tungsten in Europe. Uh, in that case, it's Sandvik, which owns a 
the largest uh, tungsten processing facility in Europe and Austria, and uh, with a um, US customer who has uh, said they will kill me if I disclose their names. But uh, um, very reputable and uh, one of the, uh, the top US processors. So for the first stage of production, 2,700 tonnes of tungsten concentrate. We have 80% of that locked away in contracts. Um, the contracts float with the market, so as this tungsten price is going up, we're getting the full benefit of that um, uh, into our future bottom line. On your first question, who are the competitors? Um, tungsten industry is quite concentrated and there was a, a lot of closure of uh, European and North American tungsten mines outside of uh, China. Um, in that 15, 16 period of time where there was very low prices. So um, there's a couple of other uh, mines in Spain, there's a couple of uh, mines in Russia that are about to, to close, but uh, there's no tungsten production at all in North America. Uh, the North Americans uh, and the Americans have had to go back to actually purchasing their military st strategic stockpiles to supply their tungsten producers. Um, and we're just seeing a very, very tight uh, market situation at the moment. Um, I've, I've got a question actually, more, more of an observation as well. But uh, obviously, I, I think again, with yourself, the, the fear was always how are you going to go out and raise this 30 odd million dollars worth of financing you need, which is you now, want me to answer that question? Well, which is now obviously out the way. Okay. Uh, do you think now that you, you've got that out of the way, and obviously you know you are funded, do you think we're, we're going to be able to get these these funds, these institutional investors, to start to take note? Do you think that's something which is? I, look, I, I, I think that's one of the priorities for the company. We've had an amazingly supportive, um, uh, high net worth um, private investor support base. We've had very good support from uh, TPI and a couple of other brokers. But I, I, I think. Yeah, you know, with an objective of you know, getting to a mid-tier market cap, and by by that I kind of like set an objective of 100 to 200 million pounds. Um, you know, there is an opportunity to bring on um, significant new institutional shareholders. Um, we're certainly not going to do that through um, placements. We're going to deliver the earnings performance that we we have, uh, but. Um, yeah, the fundamentals are there for a re-rating. We're going to make sure that we get in front of those uh, larger institutions and, and show us where we're going. We have a, a couple more questions. So I'll go to this gentleman here. Hello, Michael. Um, very good. A couple, couple of uh, things I'd like to know. One is that in the past, the Chinese screwed the market up by undercutting the world. Now, how do you see that now? because the Chinese did undercut the market and that's why many mines closed. So where are we there? Uh, so the, 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 well, a little bit of history. So uh, in the late 1980s, the Russians were in deep trouble. Um, Soviet Union was falling apart. They had very large stockpiles of tungsten. They dumped it on the market. And at about the same time, the Chinese, who had quite a bit of tungsten, came into the market. So you had a period of time of low tungsten prices. What you've got at the moment is um, Chinese tungsten mines costing a hell of a lot more than La Perilla in terms of operating costs. And you've got the Chinese government very, very aggressively going into um, uh, these, in some cases, toxic mines in China and shutting them down. So one of the major, and, and it might just be a, a 2018 fear, but uh, one of the major areas of reduction in capacity that's occurring literally now is um, environmental regulation shutdown of Chinese tungsten mines. What that means is the Chinese supply the Chinese, but they don't have the surplus capacity to supply to the Americans and to the uh, Europeans. So you've got an increasingly tight um, supply-demand balance in tungsten in, um, if you like, the non-China world. And um, that's why you're seeing these, this very, very strong market.
We just have one more question. Thank you for a very interesting talk. Um, you've talked about gold and tin. Um, are, do you invest any in real importance in the finds you've had uh, of gold and tin? Or is it really an aside? Thank you. Look, uh, the main game is La Perilla tungsten. At the end of the day, uh, our focus has to be on that because that's going to deliver the earnings into 19, 20, 21, and the growth. Um, but we have, in Portugal, some really nice gold assets and some really nice copper assets. And for very small uh, comparative amounts of expenditure, I think we can very substantially increase the value of those assets. We did, and I, I think we said this in a recent RNS, we did consider spinning off those copper and gold assets and giving some of the shareholders direct exposure to it. But when uh, BlackRock came along and said, oh, we like those assets, and oh, no, you need to keep those as part of the security package for this $35 million financing, what we said to ourselves is, look, um, let's lock in the $35 million of financing from BlackRock. Let's make sure we're really smart in terms of how we substantially increase the size of the resources in our copper assets and gold assets. That gives us the option in uh, you know, two to three years to deliver that value to shareholders either by a nice asset sale or by a spin-off to shareholders. So that's still very much on the agenda, uh, but uh, what we're saying is let's invest a small amount of really smart cash in increasing the size of those assets. I tell you what, a half a million or a million ounce uh, gold mine's a hell of a lot more valuable than a 100,000 ounce gold mine. And um, I think we're going to create a lot of optionality for our shareholders in doing that.